So I thought we could discuss a verse from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. It's a very well known verse, text 22 of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. In all our ISKCON temples, we chant the speaker of the class, he chants the Sanskrit sloka. So I will I will read the Sanskrit words word by word and you can try responding. Don't worry about making mistakes. The Sanskrit language is so purifying that even if you chant incorrectly, you'll still get the spiritual benefit. Vasamsi Vasamsi Jernani Jernani Yatha So now I will chant the same word in faster melody and you can try repeating after me. Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Navani Grnati Naroparani Navani Grnati Naroparani Yatha Shri Rani Vihaya Jinnani Yatha Shri Rani Vihaya Jinnani Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Okay, so you can open to text 22 of the second chapter. Those who have books can share the books with other people. Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Navani Grnati Naroparani Navani Grnati Naroparani Yatha Shri Rani Vihaya Jinnani Yatha Shri Rani Vihaya Jinnani Anyani Samyati Navani De समयाति नवानी देही आर्यानी समयाति नवानी देही Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Navani Ganati Naroparani Navani Ganati Naroparani Yatha Shri Rani Vihaya Jinnani Yatha Shri Rani Vihaya Jinnani Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Vasamsi Jinnani Yatha Vihaya Vasamsi Jinnani Navani Ganati Naroparani Navani Ganati Naroparani Tatha Sari Rani Vihaya Jinnani Tatha Sari Rani Vihaya Jinnani Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Vishnu Das will read the translation and the purport. Please hear attentively because it is by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Om Ajnana Thimarandasya Ajnana Anjana Shalakya Chakshun Militanyena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovistan Thapita Mina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakandan Shri Guru Vaishnavanascha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raguna Thanvitam Tham Sajevam Sadvetam Savadhutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Dalita Shri Vishakha Nitamscha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Shri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vasamsi Janani Yatha Vihaya Navani Granati Naro Parani 
तथा शरीरानि विहाय जनानि अन्यानि सम्यति नवानि देहि प्रभुपाद मस्ट हैव लेक्चर्ड ऑन दिस वर्स एट लीस्ट अ हंड्रेड टाइम्स इफ नॉट मोर दिस वाज वन ऑफ प्रभुपाद्स फेवरेट वर्सेस ऑफ द भगवत गीता एंड दिस इज अ वर्स दैट अ न्यू भक्ता एंड एन ओल्ड सन्यासी कैन बोथ यूज्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड the krishna conscious philosophy the bhagavad gita's philosophy starts with understanding the difference between the body and the soul this is the abc of spiritual knowledge to understand who you are just like when you visit a foreign country the first thing they ask you is who are you and then they ask you where are you coming from you say riga latvia and then they ask you where are you going to go so similarly we need to know the answer to these three basic questions before we can understand what we should do if you were to ask a materialist who are you he will say i'm alexander valeri where are you coming from he will say riga and where are you going he will say his destination <laughs> but he will not know who he is really where is he coming from where is he going where is he going the real answers can only be found from the vedic scriptures so who are we that is answered in the second chapter my real identity is that i'm pure spirit soul in the bhagavad gita krishna almost devotes a whole chapter just to prove one point what is that one point you're not this body krishna could easily have made this point just in one verse but he had to make this point again and again from so many different angles because as prapat states in the bhagavad gita repetition is necessary in order to drive the point home so the vedic scriptures inform us that there are different dresses that you can choose just like if you go to a big department store they have clothing at different prices expensive cheap medium similarly the soul can choose from male body female body demigod body animal body tree body insect body animal body karmana deva netre na dantu deho papataye triya pravishta udaram punsam reta kanashraya ha based on the karma that the living entity performs which is all being witnessed by demigods the living entity transmigrates from one body to another the materialist cannot understand that every activity that we perform is being witnessed by several witnesses you have the paramatma as the lord in the heart who is a witness then you have the demigods like the demigod in charge of air sun moon stars etc so based on one's actions a next life is decided now the bhagavad gita is giving a very practical uh, 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 very practical explanation this explanation can be applied regardless of whether you are indian american russian hindu muslim jew christian muslim yes. i was once talking to prabhupad in bombay in 76 and prabhupad told me that this bhagavad gita's knowledge is real education he said you mean the christians don't get old the muslims don't don't get old the hindus don't get old this is universal philosophy for everyone the bhagavad gita is telling us Just like you and I change our clothes, we throw away our old clothes and take on new clothes. Similarly, the soul throws away the body and takes on a new body. Just like when you have a bank account, they keep a passbook, and in that passbook, every time money is deposited, your account is credited, and every time money is taken out, it is debited. Similarly, each of us. is keeping a passbook with yamraj and based on how we act our account is being debited or credited so bhagavad gita states <laughs> na jayate mriyate va kadache nayam bhuta bhavita bhan bhuya ajonite shashvata yam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharire for the soul there is never birth nor death nor having once lived does he ever cease to be so soul is eternal and a spiritual person has a vision of eternity the materialists do not have the vision of eternity when you take to krishna consciousness the gross materialists will come and say why are you wasting your life why don't you think about what you will do when you grow up so our answer is 
Why don't you think what, what will happen in the future? So, spiritualist has a vision of eternity, but materialist does not have the vision of eternity. The materialist thinks, with the passage of this body, everything will come to an end. Why is it that the materialist does not believe in the soul? Why is it that he doesn't believe that the soul cannot die? Because the moment he believes in the dusha, he has to believe that there is something after death. And because there is something after death, there will be the question of reward and punishment. And if there is the system of reward and punishment, he will definitely be punished for his sins. So the easiest way out is to say, there is no soul. Who has seen the soul? Everything ends with the end of this body. Eat, drink and be merry. That's the goal of life. So hmm. the Vedic scriptures explain, dharmena hina pashubi samana. Without the principles of dharma, this human life is the same as Pashu. Pashu means animal. Aha nidra bhaya maithunya cha. The Bhagavatam explains, eating, sleeping, defending and mating. These are the only activities of the materialist. So Krishna is, through the <coughs> medium of Arjuna, instructing all of us <coughs> regarding a real identity. Krishna says, soul never takes birth, never dies. The dusha can never be cut by any weapon. Nor can you burn it in fire, nor can you wash it in the water, nor can the wind blow it away. It cannot be burned or dried. It is eternally the same. And what is the measurement? One ten thousand of the tip of your hair. Can you see the soul? Krishna says invisible. Inconceivable. Inconceivable means you cannot even imagine with a mature mind. Can you imagine something which is one ten thousand the tip of your hair? which gives the energy to move day and night for the entire duration of your life. The materialists have created something which is known as a battery. Show those batteries. You run this battery, how many hours this Ruski battery will run for two hours? How many hours can this battery run? Okay, but now they have rechargeable batteries. You, you, you use a battery, then again you can recharge it. Even if you recharge a battery, <coughs> how many times can you recharge? And how long does it run? Few hours. But the soul, that doesn't need any recharging. And so small, you take the tip of your hair, divide it into 100 pieces. Again, take one piece and divide it into 100 pieces. That is the measurement of the soul. So one ten thousand of the tip of your hair. There was a very big heart surgeon. I know him very well. He is in Toronto General Hospital called Dr. Bigelow. This man has seen people die for 32 years. 32 years in 1968. Now it is about 52 years. In 1968, he had seen people die for 32 years. So, Dr. Bigelow published a big article in a Canadian paper in 68, in which he said that a sudden change in the complexion of the individual convinces him that when the person dies, there's something in the body that goes away. So I, I sent that article to Chila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada wrote to Dr. Bijlow that I'm very happy that at least you've acknowledged that there is a soul. Because in the Western countries, Prabhupada said, people don't even believe that there is a dusha soul. But Prabhupada said, now you're trying to find out where is that soul? That will never be possible. And so in the end, Dr. Bijlow acknowledged that what the knowledge in the Vedas is superior to what modern science will ever discover. So, the beginning of spiritual life is to understand that you are not this body and your pure spirit soul. The real beauty in the living entity is not this body which may be made of, which is made of earth, water, fire, air, ether, but the real beauty is the presence of the soul. People will spend a fortune in going to a nightclub in Europe or America. Why? They want to see women, but they, they want to see living women. Nobody wants to see a dead woman. <laughs> so the point that we are making, the real beauty is the presence of the soul and not the presence of the body. Once you understand with the help of chanting and the philosophy that you are not this body, then you can ignore the demands of the senses. When a mother is bringing up a young child, the young child is asking the mother for so many things. Mm -hmm. But it is not that the mother gives the child everything the child will ask. The mother knows 
which demand of the child to ignore and which demand of the child to provide. Similarly, once you have the spiritual understanding that you are not this body, you know what demand of the senses to supply and what demand of the senses to reject. When the senses are going to ask you for something which is completely against the religious philosophy, then you know, reject. Now we cannot be spiritual hypocrites. We cannot tell every the other person, you are not this body, Mr. Valeri, and you are acting as if you are this body. We have to mentally understand that we are not this body and we have to apply it in practice. This is known Acharya. Acharya means one who preaches by example. And Prabhupada wanted everyone to be an Acharya. Everyone to preach by example. So the biggest problem in society today is identifying with the body, the extensions of the body, and the place of birth. Living in this country, you know how attached people are to their place of birth. And why are they attached to the place of birth and the extensions of the body? Because they really believe they are this body. Everybody says, this is my hand, my body, my head, my car, my house. You just ask him, sir, where is the mic in your body? Can you please show me? Where, where is that mic? Is he sitting in your pocket, coat pocket, overcoat? Where is he? Nobody knows where is that mic. So, when we look at a picture of ourselves, say when we were young boy, you say, this is I, when I was two years old. But, so your friend says, oh boy, you look completely different now. So how do you say this is I when I was two years old? Because there's something which was in the body then and it is still there. And what is that something? We know. The spirit soul. But the materialists do not know. So the Bhagavatam says in the second canto of the Bhagavatam, there are very beautiful statements that show the value or they show how misusing human life is a waste of time. Shrama Evahi Kevalam. The Bhagavatam says, do the trees not live? There is a tree in Vrindavan that has been living for 5,000 <coughs> years. And I'm sure there are some trees in your country that have been living for 100, 200, 300 years also. Do the bellows of the blacksmith not breathe? They have the bellows of the blacksmith in Russia. So those bellows of blacksmith, they take such deep breath. So they breathe so deeply, more deeply than you and I. Do the animals not discharge semen? The human beings are very proud of their sex facility, but the animals also discharge semen. You have the pigeons and the monkeys who can have sex up to a hundred times a day, and they are both pure vegetarians. So the point is, the Bhagavatam says, the animals not discharge semen, they also discharge semen. And the, uh, the Bhagavatam says, what is the value of the hand if the hand is not going to be used to serve the Lord? This is just like the decoration of a dead body. I do not know the custom in your country, but I imagine it is close to what we know everywhere else. But in other parts of the world, like in America, India, everywhere, it is a custom that the dead, dead body must be decorated. In India, they decorate the dead body completely before they take it to the cremation ground. And in the Western countries, especially in America and all, even being buried funeral is very expensive business. It costs ten, fifteen thousand dollars just to bury. Why does it cost so much money? Because they have very big funeral companies. And before they bury you, they put you in a very nice casket made of velvet, very soft velvet, nice wood. And they do so much makeup on your face that sometimes even your relatives cannot recognize you. I have a devotee god brother in Canada, so he was telling me that after when his father died, they did so much makeup on his father's face before they buried him, that even he could not recognize his father. Why do they do so much makeup? Because they want to show all the relatives who come there, that he died smiling. So, so the Bhagavatam says, what is the value of decorating a dead body? Prabhupada used to give a story. He used to say, one man was being drowned. Another man went inside the bow and he came back with his hat and coat and he told the whole village, See, I've saved the drowned man, drowning man. Another man said, Listen, <coughs> he only came back with his coat and cap. The man is already gone. So, Prabhupada used to give this famous example of 
polishing the cage and not feeding the bird. You have a very nice cage, you go on polishing it, you gold plate it, but you don't feed the bird inside. What is the use? So everybody today wants to have a higher living standard, like America, Europe, and so on. But what is the use? of polishing the cage, but not feeding the soul what it wants, spiritual activity. The Bhagavatam says, what's the value of the legs that do not walk to the temple of the Lord? These legs are just like the trunks of the tree. Like in this garden also we have trees. The trees also have legs, but those legs cannot move. So what's the value of the legs that don't take you to the temple of the Lord? So the Bhagavatam gives a series of examples to show how these different organs in the body must be used to serve the Lord. The Bhagavatam says, what is the value of the head that doesn't bow down before the Lord? A head that doesn't bow down before the Lord is like a heavy turban. And if you're wearing a heavy turban, then you'll sink faster in the ocean. So Prabhupada said that today we are living under the, we, we are all wearing a heavy turban, the heavy turban of Maya. We have so many material thoughts that there's no question of surrendering to Boga, to God. So, we have to understand that since we are not this body, since we are pure spirit soul, we have to work as much as it needs to keep body and soul together. This is known in spiritual life as the principle of simple living and high thinking. Simple living, high thinking means you minimize your bodily maintenance and you maximize your time for spiritual activities. And what is the materialistic principle? High living and simple thinking. Yeah. They want to think, they want to live very high, live like the demigods, and they want to think like the animals. But the animal only thinks how to eat, sleep, defend and mate. It is just like in society, if you have a grown-up man who is sucking his thumb, you all laugh at it, doesn't it? When a child sucks a thumb, you don't laugh. But if an adult sucks a thumb in public, you will laugh. So when an animal eats, sleep, different and mates, there is no harm. But if a human animal eat, it thinks about just eating, sleeping, defending, mating, then it is very tragic. So we have to understand that the real beauty is not this body. The real beauty is the presence of the soul. But because everyone thinks he is this body, they spend all their time in just doing makeup, isn't it? I have a friend, God brother friend, who once told me a very interesting story. He said in Miami, in a, in a building, there was a lift, and the lift was going up very, very slowly. So all the uh, tenants were complaining to the landlord, change the lift, the lift is taking too much time to go up. Americans are very impatient. The landlord was Jewish, very miserly. He did not want to spend any money. So, he put in the lift life-size mirrors. So, then the people stopped complaining because <clears throat> when they were going up the building, everybody was busy looking in the mirror how he looks. And because they were spending all the time standing in front of mirrors and seeing how they look, then they had no time to complain. It is taking long time to go up. <laughs> so, everyone is so concerned with their bodies that if you tell an old man that he looks very young, he is very, very happy. And if you want to insult a young man, all you have to tell him is how old he looks and he'll become your enemy. Everybody wants to artificially look happy. So it doesn't matter which language you speak, whether you speak Hindi, English, Russian. When you're posing for a photograph, everybody knows this one language. Smile, please. Because everybody wants to look happy. Just like Prabhupada used to say, even if you are sick in the hospital, somebody comes and sees you, how are you? Standard reply, Karsho, very well, how are you? <laughs> even if you are in pain, even if you are sick, when they ask you, how are you? Very well. Because that is how we really like to believe. I, I really like to believe I'm perfect, there's no problem, everything's okay. So, the Bhagavatam and the Gita and all the Vedic scriptures, they say, Adhato Brahma Jagyasa. Now you've got this human form of life. Please inquire who you are. I'm sure even in your country, when the animal, when the healthy dog crosses the street on the red light, the cops don't give him a ticket. They don't arrest him. But if you cross the street on a red light in your Moscow car, 
you get a ticket. Why do you get a ticket when you cross the road on the red light and an animal doesn't get the ticket? Why? Because human life is life of responsibility. Therefore, we have to act differently. So the Vedas are giving the same message. Human life is life of responsibility. So you must act properly. So we are not this body. You must know that this body, even though it may be... And if this body is giving you pleasure today, tomorrow it will give you pain. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a very wonderful story of King Chetaketu. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are so many nice stories that you can meditate upon. And then your mind will not worry about mundane stories. So there was a very famous king. His name was Chetaketu. He was very handsome, very rich. And he had hundreds of wives, not one or two. But still he was not happy. Why? We don't have children. No children. Then he was blessed by a great sage that, okay, one of his wives will have a child. So a little later, one son was born. And when the son was <coughs> born, the king was so happy. He, he distributed charity in the whole kingdom. But he started spending all his time with the boy and his mother. Now the other co-wives of the king, they became very envious. They said, this king is spending all his time only with the boy and his mother, not with us. This is very bad. So they decided to feed poison to the child on his first birthday. So when the king found out that his beloved son had died, he became crazy. So the great sage Angira Muni again appeared on the scene. He said, King, <coughs> you look so sad. <coughs> Last time I came, you were so happy because you had your son. What happened? He said, My son is dead. And then the King Chitakedu said, The son cannot die before the father. How did the son die before me? Then by the blessings of that great sage, the dead child came back to life. So the great sage said, the son cannot die while the father is still alive. This is the law of nature. So you please go back to your father. So the dead son that came back to life said, which father and mother do you want me to go back to? I've had so many mothers and fathers. Which one? So he said, a year ago, you did not even know me. And now you're so attached. Without me, you cannot live. So the moral of the story was, anything that gives you happiness today will give you pain tomorrow if it is some material arrangement. Today you have a handsome and beautiful body, you're very proud. You know why? Because if you have a beautiful woman's body, then all the men are running after you. And if you have a handsome man's body, then all the women are running after you. So you become very proud. But this body is not going to remain beautiful permanently. So today you have a healthy body, you are happy. But tomorrow when the same body will become sick, the fact you had a healthy body before will make you sad. Therefore, the spiritualist does not identify with the body. The spiritualist doesn't worry. Am I handsome? Am I beautiful? Am I this? Am I attractive? Am I handsome? Am I attractive? Is everyone looking at me? Because he knows that he is not this body. And the more he thinks about the body, the more he will suffer in the samsara of birth and death. Just like Prabhupada was very fond of this verse that we are discussing, Prabhupada was also fond of a story which goes to prove that you are not this body. This is known in Iskon as the story of the liquid beauty. So, just like I was just saying, a spiritualist doesn't identify with the body. He doesn't spend hours in front of the mirror seeing how beautiful he is or how handsome he is. Even if he is handsome or beautiful, he knows this is just huh, temp uh, misleading identity. Just oh. like sometimes you have telephone at home and somebody calls you or you call somebody and it turns out to be wrong number. So identifying with his body is like wrong number. Yeah. So there was a very beautiful girl. Mm. But she was also a very great devotee of Krishna. She knew that her beauty is attracting everybody else, but huh, it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just material beauty. But she was very attached to the holy name of Krishna, very attached to Krishna. And there was a young charming prince who was very attracted to her beauty. So the prince approached her and said, he proposed marriage to her. <coughs> so 
He, of course, knew that the king is a fool. He is attracted to my beauty, but my real beauty is the soul, not the body. So she said, okay, we'll meet after one week. The beautiful devotee girl wanted to teach the king a lesson. So she took a lot of laxatives, etc. And as a result, she vomited a lot and she passed a lot of stool. And instead of flushing everything away, she had everything stored in buckets. So a week later, when the charming prince appeared on the scene, the yeah, same come. beautiful lady was standing there, but now she had become ugly yeah. because she passed so much of stool and urine and mucus and so on. The prince could not even recognize her. So the prince said, a week ago you looked so beautiful. Now you look so ugly with, with wrinkled cheeks and so thin. Babe, what has happened to your beauty? She said, I'll show you my beauty. And then she showed him what she had stored away in the room. Then the king came to the realization, yes, this body is not the real beauty. The real beauty is the presence of the dusha. Why do you speak to us when a man is living and you speak to him and you say, how are you? He will reply. And when a man is dead, you tell him, how are you? No reply. The scientists are very proud of all their achievements, isn't it? So tell the scientists, Russian and American combined, okay, this man is now dead. Put life back into him. Life comes from life, not from matter. And that life is the presence of the spirit soul. And this spirit soul is giving you energy for 24 hours a day as long as you live. And what is the nature of this soul? The nature of the soul is transcendental. What is the meaning of transcendental? That which is beyond the material mode. Beyond guna of goodness, passion, ignorance. And because this dusha is beyond the three modes, the dusha can only be satisfied when you engage in an activity which is also beyond the three modes. And what activity is beyond the three modes? Only devotional service, tolka. There's no other alternative. Therefore, the Bhagavatam says, Sarve Pumsa Paro Dhamma Yata Bhatiya Dhokade, Ahito Kipatiyata Yata Sipasidati. The self can only be satisfied when the living entity engages in pure spiritual activities. So, in the Shastras, there's an example given. The example is given of two birds sitting on a tree. One bird is just eating the fruits of the tree and the other bird is just watching what the other bird is doing. Sometimes the mother will have the child playing in the front and the child is trying to do something but the mother is just watching. When will the child turn to me for help? <coughs> mother Yasoda was trying to tie Krishna to the pole. Every time she would try the rope would become few inches short. Krishna was just watching when Mother Yasoda was going to ask him. So the thing, thing, thing is, two birds in a tree, one bird is just witnessing, the other bird is eating the fruits of the tree. One is, the, one is the watching bird and the other is the doing bird. So the jiva saw is struggling very hard, trying to seek <laughs> happiness. But there is no happiness in the material world. So whether you make your country independent, or whether you make your country uh, capitalist or socialist, there is no happiness in the material world. The Kalayama Shashatam, two characteristics of material existence, misery and everything is temporary. Just like a fish cannot be happy out of water, the living entity cannot be happy without Krishna. You give a fish a golden plate, and say, please, fish, live in this golden palace. Will the fish live in the golden palace? So similarly, we must understand that we are not these bodies. In the material world, everybody has heroes. Like in your country, I have seen everywhere they have statues of past poets, philosophers, heroes. So when somebody is trying to become a sports star, he has a famous sports star as a hero. When somebody is trying to become a movie star, he is a big movie star as his hero. So similarly, one is trying to become a devotee, he also has spiritual heroes. Our heroes are the great devotees, like Jadbhar, for example, Haida Thakur, and so many others who have been steady devotees. We must understand our position. Not only we must understand, we must act in that understanding. Krishna is trying to convince Arjuna that he is not this body because Arjuna is refusing to engage in the battle. 
Arjuna is so attached to his kinsman that he says, I cannot fight. So, Arjuna is being given this philosophy that he is not this body. Now, this doesn't mean that we can use this argument that we are not these bodies to justify meat eating. Sometimes people say, you see you are not this body, so why do you complain when we eat meat? Yes, because we are not these bodies, we say we have no right to take somebody else's body away. Just say you have a right to live, I have a right to live, the animal has a right to live. So, this is a basic philosophy that we are not these bodies, and this thing should be preached to everyone. Vyasa Dev, even after having compiled a vast Vedic literature, uh, Vyasa he was still very unhappy. He had compiled, summarized everything in Vedanta Sutra, uh, then the Bhagavatam, still unhappy. Why was he unhappy? Because he had not exclusively talked about the process of devotional service. So then came the Srimad Bhagavatam. Because now the money, the spiritual master Vyasa Dev told him, that because you have not exclusively talked about pure devotional service, you are unhappy. In the Bible, there is a very nice statement which Prabhupada used to quote. Thus thy art and thus thou shalt become. So, right now when dust comes in your body, you throw it away. You don't want any dust in your body. That is what this body is. You may get the Miss World Award, but tomorrow this body is going to become dust. How? In the Christian, after the person dies, they bury the body. Even if they have a, even if the funeral costs twenty thousand dollars and they have a teak wood casket, still after some time, did you all understand what I said just now? Now the Hindus, they don't bury the body; they burn the body. And after you burn the body, what happens? Ashes. And ashes is what dust. The Parsis. They throw the body in the well. Have you people heard of a community called the Parsis? Anyway, the Parsis came from Iran. There are only about 100,000 left in this whole world, which are all in India. So the Parsis, after death, they throw the body in a well. And on the top of the well, the eagles are there, waiting for the flesh to come. The eagles are sitting on the top. They are flying in that area yeah. where the dead bodies are thrown. Yeah. So the eagle can see from a distance of seven miles a dead corpse. So the eagle sees from us, says, oh, there's a dead corpse, and it comes down and has a feast. So the Parthis don't burn the body, they don't burn it, burn, cremate. They throw it in a well, and the eagle comes and eats the body. Huh? Now after the eagle eats the body, the eagle also passes too. So when the eagle passes too, Again, the body becomes dust. So, thus thy art and thus thou shalt become. This is a fact which we support in the Vedas. So, this should be understood. Doesn't matter how handsome I may look, this body is eventually going to become dust. Therefore, the spiritualist does not identify with the body. Now, you may say, so if we don't ident identify with the body, why don't we all become like Dhruva Maharaj? Dhruva Maharaj, in the first month of his austerity in the forest, he was eating grass once every three days. You and I must have prasad three times a day. But Dhruva Maharaj was eating once every three days. But in the second month of his austerity, he stopped eating grass and he was eating fruits and berries that are meant for the animals. And in the third month of his austerity, he even stopped eating fruits and berries. He was just taking water once every nine days. And the fourth month, he even stopped taking water. He was inhaling once every twelve days. So, the point is, you may say, we are not, if you are not this body, if you are not this body, why should I eat? I can become like Dhruva Maharaj, fast like Dhruva Maharaj. But you cannot fast like Dhruva Maharaj. As long as you have this body, you have to take care of this body. And if you take care of your body properly, then you can serve Krishna. So devotees have to be practical in taking care of this body. So, this verse, the second, ch second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Thakur Bhakti Vinod said, is the most important chapter of the whole Gita. Thakur Bhaktivinoda wrote in his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita that if one understands the second chapter, he will understand the whole Gita. And if you don't understand the second chapter, then you may understand the whole, but what's the value? So, 
spiritual life mm. begins with the understanding mm. that we are not these bodies. Our understanding is, since this body belongs to Krishna, it has to be used in the service of Krishna. Just like darkness does not stand in front of light, Maya doesn't stand in front of Krishna. Krishna, Surya, Sama, Maya, Hayandikara, Yaha, Krishna, Taini, Maya, Dikara. Where there is Krishna, there is no room for Maya. Just like where there is Krishna, the, where there is Krishna, there is no room for Maya. Just like where there is sunshine, there is no room for darkness. Darkness. So Maya makes you believe that you are this body. Sometimes you may identify the rope to be a snake. So when you identify the rope to be a snake or a snake to be a rope, then that is dangerous identification. <laughs> so Krishna is a supreme scientist because Krishna is producing millions of babies at the same time and each of these babies are in, injected with a soul that is giving them life. The materialists, they produce one test tube baby and it is in, comes in the newspapers every day. Baby in the, in the test tube. Have they produced any test tube babies in Russia so far? Yeah. So they produce one <coughs> test tube baby and they say now I must get some, the Lenin Award and the Nobel Award. Krishna is producing millions of test tube babies every second. So, every year we should give the Nobel Prize to Krishna. And in your newspaper called Pravada, you must give the real Pravada. That is the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita. Because everything else which appears to be Pravada is the opposite. The real Pravada is here. So when you go on book distribution, you should tell people this is the real Pravada. Hare Krishna. So, I'll take question for half an hour. Second chapter, Second. last sentence. Seventh word. Yeah. Last uh, sentence of common What? There's no difference between Krishna within and without. I'm born in Krishna. Wait, at the purport. Yeah, the purport. <coughs> Third from the end. Third line. Yeah. There's no difference between Krishna within and without. Oh, he and, oh, and need not submit to Krishna, but to the unborn within Krishna. Yeah, unborn yeah. into Krishna. What means unborn? They are saying that the real Krishna is not manifested as yet, the impersonal Krishna. Just like yeah. there are many people who read the Bhagavad Gita, but who say unborn within Krishna. There is, there is no Bhagavad, there is no speaker. Krishna is not a person. Just like You've heard of this very famous Indian philosopher. He was India's first ambassador to your country, Dr. S. Radha Krishna. He was India's president. And he had given a copy of his commentary on the Gita to Stalin. Radha Krishna has written in his autobiography that when he gave a copy of the Gita to Stalin. So, Dr. Radha Krishna in his commentary on the Gita has said that there is no Krishna the person. Prabhupada used to give a story, once there was a very miserly man who had many chickens. The man was saying, I have to feed these chickens every day, costing me a lot of money. So why don't I cut the neck of the chicken, I will still get the egg, and I will not have to feed any food to the chicken. <coughs> but if you cut the neck, you won't get any egg. So if you take Krishna out of the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita loses all potency. The potency of the Gita is only as long as Krishna is accepted. <coughs> do, do all the gods have transcendental qualities? Yes! But still you should worship only Krishna. Don't worship demigods. <coughs> More questions, Vapros? Uh, when uh, we are in uh, wakefulness or in sleep, the uh, spirit soul is in, uh, in, uh, or in body or in mind, but when it loses consciousness, <coughs> We cannot feel anything and uh, we don't know where it is. Where is soul is always in the same place. Even when it's not when you go to sleep, the spirit soul goes to... The spirit soul is working, therefore you're breathing when you're sleeping. If the spirit soul was not working when you were breathing, sleeping, you'd be dead. You may get tired and take rest. But the spirit soul is not taking rest. How much time uh, it takes when the soul leaves one body and uh, comes to the next? Fraction, fraction, fraction of a second. And uh, how much time do, do this, uh, does the soul spend on Yamaloka? It depends upon your karma. It's not that every prisoner spends, uh, spends the same amount of time in jail. 
Yes, question, Vaprav. <laughs> is it possible to see Paramatma by uh, our eyes? Yes, but you have to become a yogi first. <laughs> you have to become a good yogam. Can't see Paramatma today. See Krishna. Uh, so due, due course of time, uh, 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 some uh, souls... What? Uh, due course of time, some souls will get liberation. <laughs> and gradually, all souls will go to the special world. And uh, who will live in material world? First of all, all souls will not go back to the spiritual world. I think your question is, how is it that the human population is increasing? Is that a question? So even if all souls go back, there's no problem, because those in the lower species of life are evolving into higher species. <laughs> and this is, I think, gradually, gradually, all souls. Yeah. Nothing to worry, because there are always people for souls falling down also. <laughs> it is not that every student in the class passes the exam. You cannot say that now, if all the students pass the high school exam in Riga, there will be no more high school exams, because the junior classes will go up to the high school. <coughs> and does it, does it mean that uh, we, we uh, have no full confidence that we will go back to Krishna because of it? After this life. After this life, because it is very difficult. You will go back to Krishna after this life if you follow his instruction. If you don't follow his instruction, you can't expect to go back. You can't expect to buy something from the store if you don't pay the price. That's uh, somehow favorable for the spiritual progress of the soul. No, it all depends upon the karma you perform when you are alive. It is said that there is no, there is no one uh, bigger than Krishna and no one smaller. smaller than Krishna. And how to understand it? Krishna, when he came in the form of Vamandev to Lord, to Bali Maharaj, you know that story, all of you? So, Krishna, in the form of Vamandev, Bali Maharaj told that beautiful beggar, ask me for something, I will give you, I'm a king. But Vamandev said, just give me enough land where I can keep three footsteps. Suppose the government in Latvia tells you, please tell us how much land you need to build a temple, you Hare Krishna. No. And we say, oh, we need enough land just to keep three footsteps. Don't say you're foolish. So, Vamanadev, Vamanadev with his first, first step, he covered the whole earth. And with his second step, covered everything from the earth to the sky. So, Krishna is bigger than the biggest. I, I had checked what was the Russian record for long jump or, you know, jumping over the tallest height. I was told it was 18 feet. But this must be in thousands and thousands of feet. And Krishna is smaller than the smallest. Your soul is one ten thousand the tip of your hair. The Paramatma is there. What, what, do, what do you think about, you know, how to say, to the citizens of... Other planets? Other planets, yes. Much information in newspapers now. Yes, in the Russian papers, I read those stories of some citizens from other planets were coming and sitting in a bench. They were sat next to some Russians and they were talking and then the, yeah, yeah. the Vedas say there is life on other planets. Now why the citizens from other planets are coming and sit speaking in Russia, that's a very interesting question. I don't know. <laughs> I think they're trying to prove to the Russians that life is there on other planets. Yeah. <laughs> you know why? Because Soviet Union was the first country on this planet, even ahead of America. In 1950s, they sent the Sputnik to outer space. So maybe that uh, the inhabitants of other planets are first coming to Soviet Union to show, yes, yes, we exist. I'm just joking. This is not a Vedic answer what I gave. I, I don't know about this, what your newspapers are writing, whether it's true or false, so I cannot say anything. You do not know if it is some writer's imaginary fiction story or what it is. Uh, you know, th there are some ch chakras in the body. <laughs> and uh, I is it possible to develop them during the <laughs> practice of... Bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is not interested in developing chakras. Just like the mother serves the child. The mother serves a one-year-old child, a newly born child, without expecting anything from the child. Similarly, the devotee serves the Lord. Without <laughs> expecting anything. You go on chanting, slowly, slowly you will lose interest in chakras. <laughs>
There was a boy called Dhruva Maharaj who went to the forest and performed austerities because he wanted to have a very big kingdom. But by his, ch- by his chanting of Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, he got so purified that in the end, he said, I don't want that kingdom. In the scriptures it is recommended to follow the footsteps of previous acharyas, but not imitate them. What is the difference? Imitate them means not act like them. Follow them means follow their instructions. Follow their instructions, but don't imitate them. Lord Shiva drank an ocean of poison, but if you and I try to drink one drop of poison, we will be... So somebody says, okay, I'm going to do what Lord Shiva did. Get me a glass of poison. You understand? Uh, Bhaktisthan Svasa Thakur said, said that Jesus Christ is Shakti Veshavatar. What does it mean? And the second question, questions, uh, question, what, uh, hmm, what will be the destination of Christ, Christians, Christians yeah, if they follow four regulative principles? Shakti Veshavatar are of two types. One, when the God, when God personally incarnates or when he empowers somebody to do a job. No Some great exists. Vaishnavas have also said that Prabhupada was a Shakta Vaishavata. So Jesus Christ was empowered by Krishna to do a particular mission. Those who follow four regulated principles, chant the names of Jesus Christ, they will go to the Jesus Christ sloga, Jesus Christ planet. They ask you this question, the Christians? Yes, yes. Tell them no problem, chant, chant, follow four regulated principles, chant 116 rounds of Jesus Christ rosaries. Of course, on one rosary, they'll have to chant the name of Jesus Christ eight times. Because 16 names of God. Jesus Christ, 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 Jesus Christ. Then next month. When Prabhupada went to Iran, he told them, chant the names of Allah. Is it the spiritual planet of Jesus Christ? Yes. But it's not the Vaikanda planet. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that uh, so give up I'm all religions yeah. <laughs> and surrender to me. What does it mean? <clears throat> no, the question is, is it possible that Krishna consciousness somehow will become <clears throat> such religion that sh- sh- should be given up? Not for another 10,000 years. After 10,000 years, there will be no religion on this planet. The moment you take the word Boga, they'll kill you. But for the next 1,000, 10,000 years, Next 10,000 years is what we call the golden age. Kali Yoga will expand and Krishna consciousness will expand. You see, like in your country, in the last 10 years, how much Krishna consciousness has expanded. I was in your country in 76 and 77 and there were hardly two or three devotees at that time. And now you see how many... And Kali Yuga is also expanded, so both are expanding side by side. Oh, what to say if people are asking who is Satya Sai Baba? Satya Sai Baba? Tell them he is a magician. In your country there have been so many famous magicians, no? So tell him he is a magician, but his magic is temporary. You know, in India, Sai Baba does some magic and he produces gold, you know that. So people say, why he does not work overtime, round the clock, he'll produce so much gold, India's poverty will be over. If I can do, if I can create gold in one minute, say if I work for six, 24 hours, I should be able to produce big stock of gold. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that mm, whatever a uh, man think uh, about... Uh, At the moment of death? Yeah, yeah. That's where he will go. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, if uh, someone, uh, while when he's dying, think mm-hmm. about Jesus Christ, does it mean that he will go to the spiritual plane of Jesus Christ? Uh, yes. Generally, at the moment of death, mm-hmm. you will think what you've been thinking about all your life when you were alive. This is the law of nature. Just like if you don't study, you can't expect to pass in the exam. If you have not done any practice of weightlifting, you cannot go to the Olympics and win a gold medal. Do the Shaitani Mahaprabhu uh, come every Kali Yuga? And if not, that doesn't mean that in other Kali Yugas uh, there, there will not be any Sanketan movement. In Chaitanya Chattamrita it only talks about this Kali Yuga. So I don't want to speculate on the other Kali Yugas. But I'm sure the Lord always has a plan to save the conditioned souls. Uh, do, do the soul, uh, have, do the soul ha- have a choice? Uh, you know, um, when to, to take birth in family with, uh, to, to take, uh, to get body with black, 
No. No choice. Karma. Karma decides. But the decision of Krishna is very fair. There is no cheating there. Very fair, very just. About distribution you want. Yes, yes. No, I'm going to stop now. You can keep your questions for tomorrow because I'll speak for about 10 minutes on book distribution. And after that, I'm going to see the Minsk devotees before they go at night. Book distribution, as we all know, was Prabhupada's dear most activity. Book distribution was not an activity that Prabhupada encouraged to make a profit. Book distribution was an activity that Prabhupada encouraged because it saves the person who is doing book distribution and the person who gets the book. Just like when Parikshit Maharaj recited the Shukri, the Bhagavatam to Shukadev I'm sorry, when Shukadev Goswami recited the Bhagavatam to Parikshit Maharaj. Shukadev Goswami was liberated because he spoke the Bhagavatam and Parikshit Maharaj was liberated because he heard the Bhagavatam. So, book distribution is an activity which increases your dependence on Krishna it brings you closer to Krishna and uh, this opportunity to do book distribution is only given to Lord Chaitanya's most confidential devotees. This Bhagavad Gita is a great science. It's a science which can only be understood through the help of a devotee. What does Krishna say? This is the most confidential of all sciences. So this sacrament science is being distributed by the sacrifice Priyadhani of Krishna. So, those who engage in book distribution, they must understand. They have the special, special, special mercy of the Lord to get this opportunity to preach. In the 18th chapter of the Gita, Krishna says, Yai Dham Parmam Guyam. He is my best devotee who is always preaching my glory. Prabhupada said, as long as book distribution goes on, I will never die. Because as long as book distribution goes on, Prabhupada is preaching. He is explaining to the conditioned soul, you are not this body. Narottam Das Thakur has said that one who thinks that the Vaishnava dies is a fool. Because the Vaishnava is always alive through his Vani instructions. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to encourage his associates to go and preach from house to house, village to village in Bengal. So, in the same tradition, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarpati Thakur encouraged his disciples to preach, do book distribution. Thakur Bhakti Nodu was such an important man, magistrate. He, after retirement, would go house to house and begging people for one rupee donation. Iskon has one slogan. What is the slogan of the Soviet? Okay, I'll tell you. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you what is Iskand's slogan. Preaching is the essence. This means that we may chant Hare Krishna, we may read the books, but we must go and preach. If we just chant and we don't preach, then it's useless. There are two types of devotees, Ghost and Nandi, Bhajan and Nandi. Ghost and Nandi is one who goes and preaches. Bhajan uh, Nandi is one who sits in Vrindavan and does, does japa. So, every Vaishnava means para dukha dukhi. When he sees somebody else is in pain, he becomes pained. Just like any one part of your body may be cut, but your whole body feels the pain. So, similarly, as long as people are engaged in sinful activities, a Vaishnava cannot be happy. Therefore, the Vaishnava, in order to make other people happy, he goes from house to house, village to village, town to town, country to country, planet to planet, preaching the glories of Sri Krishna. So preaching is the essence. Books are the basis. How do you preach? By doing book distribution. Prabhupada once told me, our books are quality inside and quality outside. That means our books are very high quality material and the presentation is also first class. And purity is a force. The desire to preach comes from purity. So purity comes from chanting. So when we go and distribute books, we are pleasing not only Prabhupada, <coughs> but the whole Guru Parampara. In Prabhupada used to be so pleased when he used to hear of devotees doing book distribution, that he used to say, oh, my Guru Maharaj is very pleased. Before Prabhupada went to America, Prabhupada, when he was in India publishing his own books, he used to go out in the hot sun of Delhi, stand on the street for six, six hours and distribute his paper back to God. One day Prabhupada was distributing his paper and he fainted in the hot sun. As soon as he came back to consciousness, 
he again started distributing. So, that's enough for today. So, should I ask you all some questions now? I should yeah, ask no. you tomorrow. Give you all a written exam. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Rama